Medicine is a respected career precisely because practitioners dedicate their time and life to help save other people's own. However, some doctors seem to have gotten the memo wrong, because they ended up doing the opposite of that. Welcome to our channel, and today we'll be taking a look at the top 5 most evil doctors of all time. Instead of helping their patients, these monsters help them to their grave by killing them. Stay until the end to learn which one was the most disturbing case of the serial killer doctor. And also subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on for more great content like today. Now, without further ado, let's begin our countdown. 5th place, Herman Mudgett. We're kicking off our list with the utterly terrifying Herman Mudgett, once known as Dr. H. H. Holmes. He was born in New Hampshire in 1861 and had a keen interest in animals. And with keen, we mean that he enjoyed performing surgery on them. Holmes became a medical student at the University of Michigan and was known to steal corpses from the school to make fraudulent insurance claims. Many sources also report that he experimented on these poor unfortunate corpses. Eventually, Mudgett moved to Chicago and got a pharmacist job. Fearing that he was going to be exposed by the victims of his previous scams, he changed his name and called himself Dr. Henry H. Holmes, and even took over the pharmacy by murdering the owner and his wife. Not stopping there though, Holmes also proceeded to buy a house specifically for the murder, featuring secret passages, trap doors, soundproof rooms, locked doors and even gas jets to suffocate his victims. Mudgett confessed to 27 murders, although 9 could be plausibly confirmed as many of those he murdered were still alive. He also claims to kill around 200, though once more there's no definite proof that this happened. Besides being a serial killer, Holmes was also a part-time con artist and a bigamist. The subject of more than 50 lawsuits in Chicago alone, so if he didn't kill you, he would at least try to steal money from you. Holmes was executed on May 7, 1896, nine days before his 35th birthday, for the murder of his friend and accomplice, Benjamin Pitessel. During his trial for the murder of Pitessel, Holmes confessed to many other killings, which only adds to his overall creepiness level. Fourth place, Dr. Boulder. Next up, we have the infamous Dr. Boulder who was also part of the Philadelphia Poison Ring. The Poison Ring was led by Italian immigrant cousins Herman and Paul Petrillo in the 1930s. They had heavy contacts in the criminal world. The thing with Dr. Balber is that he believed in La Fatura, which is magic, believed by many South Philadelphia Italians of the time. When the Petrillo cousins also aspired to learn La Fatura, they recruited the help of Dr. Bulber, who gave potions to patients with promises of helping them improve their lives. The Petrillos issued insurance policies without medical exams, and then would pay the doctor to poison them with arsenic. Bulber also hired killer thugs to murder people by drowning, bludgeoning and running them over with cars. The murders began in 1931, and an estimated 30 to 50 people were killed. Dr. Bulber was arrested in 1939, putting an end to his terrible murder spree. Third place, Michael Spangler. The next terrifying serial killer doctor in our list is Michael Spango, who graduated summa cum laude in 1979 and ended up killing a bunch of people with his extensive medical knowledge. Swango is rumored to have fatally poisoned as many as 60 patients between 1981 and 1997. He is currently in a supermax prison serving life terms without parole. Similar to the first place of our list, which you will find out later, Swango's co-workers began noticing an abnormal number of patients who were suddenly dying. After a quick investigation, however, Dr. Swango was cleared of any guilt in 1984. Once his internship ended, however, he got a job as an EMT. Later, Swango was arrested when his co-worker became violently ill due to poisoning. He had spiked their coffees with arsenic in an attempt to murder them and was sent to prison for five years. 
He found work at VA hospital in New York state, but began killing patients once more as soon as he could. Once the hospital found out that he had lied on his application and was a convict, he got fired and was chased by the FBI until he was found and sent to prison. Are you shocked to learn about these horrifying medical practitioners who call themselves doctors? Comment what you think so far below. Second place, Dr. John Bodkin Adams. In the second spot of our list, we have Dr. John Bodkin Adams. Between 1946 and 1956, around 160 of his patients died suspicious deaths, and 132 of these had put Dr. Adams in their wills. Did no one notice that this was a tad suspicious? He was eventually tried for the murder of a patient in 1957, though he wasn't found guilty of the crime. It's not known if he had murdered his elderly victims or had euthanized them, but the point still remains that he murdered them. A late trial also found him guilty of 13 offenses including prescription fraud, lying on cremation forms, obstructing a police search and failing to keep a dangerous drug register. Unlike others in our list, Adams got stripped of his license but was reinstated later and even was allowed to keep practicing medicine. That literally made no sense. He died of natural causes in 1983. Are you ready to learn who's the most prolific case of a serial killing doctor? We are definitely not. Let's head down to the first place to find out. First place, Harold Shipman, Dr. Death. In the first spot of our list, we have Harold Frederick Shipman, commonly known as Dr. Death. You know, a doctor's definitely creepy and dangerous if that's his title, instead of something like Harold Shipman, MD. Dr. Death is infamous for being the most prolific serial killer in modern history. Ironic, considering that he's a doctor. It is said that he killed around 15 patients under his care, but his total number of victims has been estimated to be around 250. Shipman was ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment, even told to never be released. He was such a terrifying killer that he caused the United Kingdom's healthcare structure to be thoroughly reviewed and modified as a result of his crimes. What probably drove him to be a serial killer was the death of his mom, with whom he had an extremely close bond at only age of 17. She had lung cancer and died of a morphine overdose administered to her by the doctors. An important fact, as that's also the way Shipman killed his future victims. Shipman wanted to go to medical school and two years after his mom's death, he was admitted to Leeds University for training, though he failed his entrance exam the first time. Shipman became addicted to pethidine and even went as far to prescribe it for his own use and got kicked out of practice. However, he forged some documents and got accepted on the staff at Donnybrook Medical Center in Hyde. Pretending to be a warm and caring doctor who was more concerned with murdering victims with morphine, some colleagues and the local undertaker began wondering how Shipman's patients always seemed to die, and the fact that, for some other reason, they were all fully clothed and could be found sitting up or reclining on a city. Eventually, Angela Woodruff, the daughter of one of his victims, proceeded to investigate Shipman closely after her mom's death. Grundy's daughter, lawyer Angela Woodruff, became concerned when solicitor Brian Burgess informed her that a will had been made, apparently by her mother. There were doubts about its authenticity, as for some strange reason, the will excluded Woodruff and her children but also left money to Shipman. It was found that Shipman would alter the medical notes after killing the patient to make sure that his account also matched the historical records. Once he was caught, Dr. Death committed suicide before his execution and admitted to killing 15 patients because he enjoyed exercising control over life and death. So are you shocked to learn about the true past of these doctors? So are we. How could they have done something so horrible? Anyway, let us know what you think of them in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more great content like today and if you want to enjoy more videos like this one, 
why not check out our channel page. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching.